morning. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of what I call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I hate this thing. Speed warning. Uh, host of this program, known on social media, wherever you may find me, I'm the mighty one, <laughs> this thing said hates me too, <laughs> I'm the mighty one, Angel Snub Nub 7, and I am also your soul brother, Speed warning. number one. I am inspired to take these few minutes. Speed warning. And I would like to send a shout out to my soul brother, filmmaker Omar Shabazz, for sending me a copy of uh, that new documentary. Speed warning. That was uh, presented on Fusion Network. Who killed Malcolm X? And the the conclusion of the film. Speed warning. I guess for them, but our brother Omar Shabazz has stated for a very long time. But it's new information for them, or this particular person, who had the influence in order to get this documentary made and put on a, a network, they reveal the possibility and direct, uh, direct us towards the one who actually murdered Malcolm X problem. It's still an allegation. You still have to, we still have to have the correct evidence and things of this nature, but we have a good idea of whom that person was. There was a uh, statement that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan made. He said, the reason why I am alive is because Malcolm X died. No, sir. Speed warning. In order for you to live, Malcolm X was assassinated. That's what happened. Malcolm X was murdered. So if you claiming that in order for, he was murdered, he was assassinated, sir, there's a big difference. He did not die of natural causes. There's a big difference, sir. Just like if you have the vice president set up the president to be assassinated so he could take power. So in a way, Speed warning. if I was you, I wouldn't say that because you sound like you're saying that perhaps you had something to do with this man's murder so that you can solidify your position in the nation of Islam. That's what it sounds like to me. I could be wrong. Or maybe because I, uh, many of y'all say that I'm biased against the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. <laughs> but that's what it sounds like to me. Now, if you believe that I find some type of joy speaking about it don't have to be just Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam or Tariq Nasheed or Umar Johnson or whomever if you think that I find some type of joy speaking in a manner where you might find 
not that it is, but you may find disrespectful. I'm talking a bunch of S-H-I-T. However you feel. But just like the minister taught you, didn't he just say, in order for him to become better, in order for him to live, Malcolm died, so in order for us as a people to live, Elijah Muhammad died and Malcolm and Sojourner too, all those prior to us, in order for us to walk better, we must learn from their experience, we must learn from their mistakes. So that we can walk better. And basically, that's what Farrakhan was saying. He learned from the mistakes Malcolm made. Things of that nature. But this does not mean you won't stop making mistakes. So yes, Mr. Farrakhan, Let's just use your belief that Malcolm died so you can live. Speed limit reduced to half. You still make mistakes. You still walk making error. Speed warning. Because you really have not learned from the mistakes of the past. You learn just enough to secure a place so that you don't have to work Talk a good game so people can take care of you. You learn that part of the game. Speed warning. But uh, clearly you did not learn from Malcolm because if you did, then you should liberate or the people should have been liberated by now. You've had 40 years, sir. You've had Speed over 40 warning. years. And you have done nothing greater than Elijah Muhammad or Malcolm at all. You caused two million men or whatever to waste their time, waste their money to go stand at the nation's capital that did not result in nothing. Oh yeah, we're not saying that your Million Man March wasn't a total waste of effort. There was some positive, no doubt, yes, yes it was. But something on that grand of a scale, you would wish to produce grand results and that did not happen and you yourself sir you were so embarrassed that a few months later I believe or that next year forgot exactly how it went you got on a plane and took a tour of the Middle East because these Negroes here in the States was firing you up calling you a loser and a failure because you had the attention of two million people, actually the whole black community basically, you had the, the uh, attention. You the only one in our history that actually had the attention on such a massive scale of brothers and sisters, and you are nothing. And the ones who don't like you was happy to jump on the bandwagon to talk about you and make mockery of you for months and months and months and you couldn't stand it. So you got on a plane and went on because God called you to the Middle East to take a tour. A tour to do what, sir? To accomplish nothing. You brought, when you came back from that world Muslim tour, whatever you want to call it, when you came back from the tour, what did you bring back? nothing except some trinkets that you got from the 
religious hierarchy of those countries that you visited. That's all. You didn't bring the two million men that you inspired to come to Washington, D.C. You didn't bring them back nothing. And so now you have people like Brother Ben X, who, who was probably, who probably wasn't even born yet, or still sucking Similac milk. Speed warning. Yeah, you got uh, Malcolm, Malcolm Flex TV, and all these people making excuses, talking about Speed you listen to the message that Farrakhan gave, I want y'all to go get that message and, and take that into consideration and then you do your own thing. Well, first of all, if I can do my own thing, what the hell I need you for? You're coming to the mall for leadership. You're coming to the mall for guidance. That's what these men are looking for. If they knew what to do, they wouldn't be coming to the mall to listen to your happy ass. And what do you tell them? Oh, go join the Nation of Islam. Go join the NAACP, join the church, atone for your sins, and that was it. What do I do, sir? How does that change my condition how does it change the condition of myself, my family, and community? How does it build, how does it direct me to building my own nation, sir? And these so-called Uncle Tom, they laughed at, they laughed at uh, Farrakhan. That whole Million Man March was a farce, it was a joke. And even to this day, people wondering what happened to the money. And of course, you give enough information to satisfy your curiosity, but the curiosity on that question still has not been answered. Oh yeah, if we was man, Y'all wouldn't be ask, answering, asking these questions. Guess what? You ain't the white man. What you do with the money? Guess what? You ain't the white man. What that damn school you been talking about for the last 10, 20 years? No, you ain't the white man. Stop using this tactic. This is about you. This ain't about the white man. This is about you. This is about what you do. <laughs> right, Rowan? This is about what you do. Stop the distraction tactics. When you go to court, it's about you. It's the state versus you. They don't want to hear, well, so-and-so did the same thing and blah, blah. They don't want to hear that. It's the state versus you. This is about you. And they don't care what they did for somebody else. This is about you. You can go to court for the, for the same charge and somebody will get probation and you prison. Uh, uh, what, what about them? This is about you, your case. They might not like you, okay? So, uh, let's stop the distraction tactics. I am here because if you want to live, then those who have died, those who have came before us and made these mistakes, in order for us to live, they die. 
So Farrakhan has made mistakes. The question that I raise is the government spying on Farrakhan? Well, I know some of you might be shocked. Some of you might be surprised at my answer. And I'm going to say, yes. What? Yes. The government is spying on Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. Yes, yes, yes. How can you come to that conclusion? I come to that conclusion because the government would view the nation of Islam and has always viewed the nation of Islam as a threat because of their potential. The potential of being a threat. Not because Louis Farrakhan is a threat, but something could change that could make the nation of Islam a real threat. Not under the leadership of Louis Farrakhan, but that organizational skill, that, that, uh, that group, that mindset is a threat. Of course, Farrakhan is not a threat. What kind of man is a threat running around kissing white dudes in the public? What kind of threat is he? He's not a threat to he's not a threat to white folks. Hell you kissing them in the mouth. They live in his house. He has biracial grandchildren and daughter-in-law and father-in-law and mother-in-law. What kind of threat is he? And he always talking about the Jews. Elijah Muhammad taught the white man is the devil. <laughs> I know, Laurel. Elijah Muhammad said the white man is the devil. That includes the white Jews. Jews are Caucasian people. Louis Farrakhan has Caucasian members. He has Pink MGT, Pink FOI in his organization. What kind of threat is he? He's nothing like the original nation of Islam. Now what brought me to this, this talk was this documentary, Who Killed Malcolm X? And of course, the beginning, even prior, oh man, look, look. Malcolm X was real, okay? That's just the bottom line. That was the main problem that kicked off, that really started this. It was not the revelation of Elijah Muhammad exploiting women in his organization like most preachers do. What kicked it off, really, in the very beginning, just like this documentary suggests, is that Malcolm began to see that the nation of Islam was fake. That was, that's what really started kicking it off. In, in 1962, the police murdered uh, the, the uh, secretary of the uh, Los Angeles mosque, Ronald Stokes. And Ronald Stokes was very close to Malcolm and Malcolm wanted revenge. Now remember how the nation of Islam talked. 
Remember what they teach. They don't believe in turning the other cheek. They believe in eye for an eye. They believe in defending yourself. Malcolm X wanted revenge. But just like the just like the documentaries uh, suggest. The Nation of Islam was doing great business. It's all about the money, not about the teachings. All that money got good to Elijah. All that money got good to those close to Elijah Muhammad, his family. That money was looking good. If Malcolm started some stuff, that would interrupt that money flow. That's what it was all about. And just like the uh, documentary suggests, and I watched some of that speech that Malcolm made after Elijah Muhammad, Muhammad told him to chill out over that. Malcolm had to get on the roster. I know his words, he even sound embarrassed. Because y'all talk all this stuff. You need to stop. Y'all need to stop all that damn singing and start the swinging. Here you are, a Muslim. Murdered. And Ronald Stokes was not going to be the only one, y'all. To my knowledge, at least seven to, to nine Muslims have been killed by the police or whatever. The Nation of Islam took no action. No action. They was not singing and they was not swinging. Brother Malcolm felt embarrassed because he been talking all this, defend yourself, and the Quran said, fight with those who fight with you. And Elijah Muhammad said, chill. That's really when the problem started. Because Malcolm started to realize he's part of an organization. He has a leader that is a punk. So while the white man is killing your own folks, what is Elijah Muhammad doing? Getting in the panties of these young women. That's what he was doing. This is your leader. This is your teacher. This is your guy. You can get angry at me all that you hell that you want. That's what was going on. Your people being murdered. Your people being hurt. And your leader running around, sneaking around. And the FBI, the CIA, always knew this. That's when the problem started. Malcolm began to see that the nation of Islam was fake, was not real. All this money, all this famous celebrity, all this God worship, that's what it was all about. These people are not real. They wasn't real in 1965 and they're not real. I don't give a damn if it's Farrakhan or Roy Jenkins or Eric Muhammad. They are not real in 2019. My brother Talib hit me to an interview that Eric Muhammad, temple number 15 in Atlanta, gave an interview. And the and the interviewer asked, cause, cause Eric Muhammad talking all this, y'all need to stop singing and start swinging bull crap. The same thing, Nation of Islam always talk. And the interviewer asked Eric Muhammad, have you ever done this? I mean, took a swing. Oh, oh, oh no, I, so I, oh, you, you never done it. So, when, I mean, when is this supposed to happen? I mean, y'all, in, in other words, you talking all this, but have no intent, don't look like. Now, 
these nations of this motherfucker talk all this crap. Never. They never took. Muhammad always say, talk black to me. Now you tell me, they talking all this crap, now The nation of Islam never purposely like they hunted down Malcolm, like they beat up their own men, like they threatened folks. They have no to racist or any other enemy of the black community. Never. Anytime you hear about the nation of Islam having a fight with the police, that's because they didn't have a choice. It was self-defense. They never purposely went out to do harm to race. But they will go out and have went out and murdered not only Malcolm X, he's just the most famous. They've murdered others also, and children and babies. And you support them. So yes, the government is spying on Farrakhan and keep an eye on the situation because something could change. Somebody might rise up after Farrakhan is dead and gone. Somebody might take over and actually make the nation of Islam what it really supposed to be. Or they would be happy if the organization just go. Remember, the, the Nation of Islam is a group. The races always had fear of its slaves when they gathered in groups. They don't like you, like you hanging on the corner six at a time and if you believe they might even be in some of these churches they might be spying on some of these churches because some of these preachers whether you know it or not some of these reverends are sort of rebellious too you think a, a lot of these you think a lot of these Christian preachers you got them wrong you think they forgive everybody and all that love everybody. They don't go for that. All Christian preachers ain't like that. I know I've been around. You are being monitored on YouTube. You are being monitored on Facebook. Your telephone tap. Every last one of us is a potential threat. So yeah, not only Farrakhan being spied on, every last one of us on social media, and you know with these cell phones, it's much, much easier to spy on you. Hey, what's up there, Ananda? These cell phones make it much easier to track you down, they know where we at all the time. They can it's easily to it's easy to mark. That's why Al Qaeda or those supposed to be terrorists, terrorist groups, they stop using modern technology. Me myself, I'm not worried about it. I have no secrets. Listen all you want. No big deal. 
And that's how I want to bring this talk to a conclusion. So in this documentary, and as you know, during the 60s and 70s, our organizations and individuals had with something by the FBI called Intel Pro. You are familiar with Quintel Pro. This is what I want to say to us. Start accepting responsibility for yourself. Oh, the reason why the Nation of Islam and Malcolm fell out was because of Quintel Pro. Oh, the reason why the Black Panther Party fell out was because of Cointel Pro. I say, oh, do do. What? Cointel Pro. No. I say, bull do do. The reason why the Nation of Islam went through what it went through, the Black Panther Party, and all these groups, not because of Cointel Pro. They failed and they were destroyed by the people themselves. Dude, you are Uncle Tom, you are cool. How dare you say something like that? No, you are trying to insult my intelligence. That's what you're trying to do. You don't want to take you don't want to take responsibility for what they done. Here you are. Elijah Muhammad is putting before the people of being this holy and righteous man and he trying to stick his penis in every woman that he get his hands on in the background that's what he was doing you teaching one thing and doing something else behind folks back The only thing the enemy done was take advantage of it. Did they make, did Cointel Pro, did, did Herbert Hoover, ain't that his name? I think it's Herbert Hoover, Hoover, whatever his damn name is. Did Hoover make Elijah Muhammad put his penis in these young women, a married man? Did Hoover tell Elijah Muhammad to pay himself as some holy, holy than thou person? No, he did not. You put yourself out there like that. You the one became the deceiver. And the only thing Cointel Pro did was go behind the scenes, get their informants, and they took advantage of what you was doing. Nobody made your happy ass do nothing. And apparently, Elijah Muhammad did not tell his wife what was going on. I'm the divine messenger. Allah told me to mess with these women. She found out because the FBI sent her evidence of the, of the whole situation. You are a liar and a deceiver of your own people. And now you want to sit around here and you want to give excuses to these people when they was in the wrong. And you want to know something, see? Y'all do the same thing. If you got mad at your best friend and y'all no longer together and you hate his guts and you know that your, your friend ain't paid taxes in the last two or three years, and you report them to the IRS. See, your friend need to, he know that he got an enemy out there. He need to straighten his act up. You know you got an enemy out there. You got to walk as clean as possible. You want to blame them 
for doing what they're supposed to do. They are your enemy. It's up to you to walk straight. Oh, just blame them. They destroyed. No, you destroyed yourself. Because you're doing something that you should not be doing. You destroy yourself. Because the people are looking for a good example. Clean leadership. They're looking for that. If you can't be that, then at least be honest. Why don't you be honest? And just tell the people, look, I want liberation for us, but, but look, I'm a hoe. I gotta have me some booty. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I'm gonna fight for liberation and do everything I can. But bro, hey, I gotta get me some panties. How many of y'all sisters want to have an origin? I mean, just be real. See, if you if you was real like that, what could the what could the FBI, what could they say? Everybody know you a hoe. You fighting for liberation. You fighting for civil rights, but you a hoe. <laughs> you know, be real with it. Oh no, you want to come before the people. You holier than thou. You know, you a one woman man. If you smoke blunts, if you drink alcohol, whatever the hell you do, why don't you just be real with everybody? But no, you gonna come before the people. I, I, I don't. Like, like Umar Johnson. Umar Johnson told the people, oh, I've been celibate for the last 100 years. Next thing you know, <laughs> next thing you know, he's caught up in, in, in stripper game. But see, if Umar just kept it, I mean, if, if these leaders and people, if y'all just keep it real, instead of putting on these on these damn fronts, y'all be all right. If you wanna smoke some dope, smoke some weed, you know, if you run around here getting all these baby mamas, just be real about it. You wanna put on this damn front. Cointel Pro did not destroy these organizations. They destroyed themselves because they was fake. They deserved to go down. And they did go down. Y'all always want to make excuses for people. So they died so that we can live. If I wanted to be your leader, and I'm a whole, I'll just tell y'all, hey, ain't just nothing up seven, I like to get down with the ladies. Like to smoke me some weed. But I'm against white supremacy, racism. Well, brother, how can you fight white supremacy? You know, how you treat women and smoking weed? Hey, I ain't perfect, bro. That's all I can tell you. I ain't perfect. We're not perfect. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. We expect leadership to be perfect. And so you're destroying yourself because you looking at people thinking they they perfect. So they gotta go undercover to get the booty to get the crack, to go partying to the disco, sneak around because they scared to tell you, well, you know, I'm married to a white woman. What? Because y'all going to judge them. The only thing I want is to change this condition. I'm not perfect. I'm married to a white woman. I smoke weed, whatever. So here you are, you're going to force a good leader 
to be something he or she is not because they're homosexual or whatever but they're getting the job done for your happy ass because in your mind you got this delusional view of some type of black messiah this black messiah he don't smoke he don't drink he's holier than thou or whatever that's not life What's his name? General Grant, during the Civil War. He was known to be a drunk. And they went to President Lincoln and told President Lincoln, hey man, I don't know, I, you know, you, you're sending, you're sending uh, General Grant out there. That, that fella, he, he's a drunk. President Lincoln was a wise man. He said, how does he act on the battlefield? Is he taking care of business on the battlefield? And they said, well, is he taking big care of business on the battlefield? And as you know, this drunk, Ulysses S. Grant, he helped, he helped win the Civil War, and he also became the President of the United States. You need to y'all need to stop tripping off of these delusions that you got in your mind of what leadership. You think that you're supposed to love your leader. I mean, that's nice. It's nice if you can love your leader. It's nice. It's a beautiful thing. Leaders, leadership has to do things you don't you you probably don't even understand. It's not about liking somebody. The leader has to make moves and do things which is in the, in the best interest of the whole. And you might not like it. You want to run around here, I love me, I love so-and-so. You want to love people. But where are they leading you to? Nowhere. Where has, where has Le uh, Louis Farrakhan led you? Nowhere. Where is Tariq, Tariq Nasheed leading you? Nowhere. Omar Johnson, what they getting you? Nothing. You like them, I love them. That's not leadership. That's some type of fanatical obsession. The real leader, you probably hate their guts. But they are the man, they are the woman that'll get the job done. So it's up to you. Do you just want to love somebody? Or do you want to be liberated? Do you want to be free? I heard O'Shea Duke Jackson talk about uh I couldn't I can't I can't I can't follow no homosexual. Well that's your problem, sir. That homosexual probably be the one to get you out your situation. Just goes to show that you're a damn fool. Keep keep waiting for this perfect leader in y'all delusional mind. Holy than thou. He don't smoke, don't drink. Got wings on his back. <laughs> Whatever these delusions that y'all looking for. I guarantee you, the person that is the best leader for us, you can't stand their guts. You hate everything. Almost remind me of myself. Because <laughs> I'm not well liked. You got a problem with everything that I say. That's the person that can solve your problem once and for all. Leadership is not a popularity contest. You have a good leader, as long as, as that leader gets you what you want, do what is in the best interest of the people, and treat everybody fair and just. Good leadership. So yes, the government is spying on Farrakhan. Why not? Because of the because of the potential threat. He's not a threat himself. 
but that organization, how it's put together, that mindset is a threat. Also, us as individuals, even in the church, wherever that mindset is at, and wherever these, these people are gathered together in a group and can organize, that's a threat. And really, the bottom line, brothers and sisters, we are the ones keeping ourselves down. Because when you look at Cointel Pro, they really didn't do nothing that could stop the Nation of Islam or the Black Panthers or none of these organizations. They stopped themselves. The government couldn't, couldn't stop them. We are stopping ourselves right now. The reason why we don't have an independent nation, we don't have a state, we can't control our own neighborhoods, towns, don't have a city, we stop ourselves. Because we're silly. We're immature in the mind. We live in fiction. You know, we have the we have a fantasy way of looking at life. You don't see things from a real point of view. You talk about racism, white supremacy, you really don't know what it is, really. Because as long as you embrace black, as long as you talk about aboriginal and African, you're still part of that racism clique. The only thing you're jumping, the only thing you're doing is going from one slave and supremacy, the only thing you do, you're doing is changing the face of racism. That's all. You're not destroying it. Still using race classifications. Still view yourself as black, African, and all these labels that these races made up for you. And as long as you play that race game with them, you will always be a victim. Always. You might be a happier victim because maybe the supreme race would be black. That's what you want, right? That's what you want. You want to be the slave owner. You want to be the supreme race. So that makes you no better than the races themselves. And the reason why you are, you are like that because you think just like them. Your view of success is just like them. You want a big car, house. Your view of success is materialism. I don't want to be poor. So that means you, you want to continue this class system. Poor, rich, middle class, all that dumbass garbage. That's not equality. You say you want freedom, justice, and equality. Equality is not poor, rich, and middle class. Equality is not the man is the head of household. That's not equality. So you a liar. So since you a liar, you need to you need to stay right here with the white man where you at. Because it makes no sense from you to go from a dirty house to a clean house just so that you can make that clean house just as dirty as the house you left. It defeats the purpose of being liberated. Liberated from what? And you still the same Negro you was before being liberated. It defeats the purpose. <laughs> On that note, I, well, I just wanted to, I thought I could just talk about this for 20 minutes and it's almost an hour. I guess, you know, just had a lot to say. You know, like they say in the, in the Christian church, when the spirit hits you, <laughs> I shed a tear so much for Brother Malcolm. And I want to make something very clear. Brother Malcolm was not perfect. He was not perfect. But one thing that is clear 
he was very sincere and he did love us as a people and he wanted the best for us that's that's for sure you could not buy Malcolm he did not care nothing about fancy houses and fancy cars according to that documentary Malcolm X didn't even have a hundred dollars when he died you hear me he's famous public figure and he was murdered didn't even have a hundred dollars in his pocket sister Betty had to struggle really really hard and let me say this too in regard to that documentary to this guy that it is saying murdered Malcolm X unfortunately there would be no justice because this guy he just he just died he just passed his life and the Muslim community gave him a wonderful send-off and everybody has an idea that this man murdered Malcolm X but in religion they say it's up to Allah you know to forgive and make judgment I also want to remind people that everybody did not like Malcolm X they was glad he probably was a hero to some of these people they was glad he killed Malcolm X so yeah he's a hero in the United States as you know there is no limitation, statute of limitation on murder. But when you're dead, <laughs> that's over, okay? So, as a Muslim, you telling me that it's a possibility this man murdered Malcolm X and you're going to give him a free pass. Oh, he changed his life. He probably regret. He has to, he got to live with what he done and blah, blah, blah. So if that's the case, I do not want to hear y'all Muslims talk about the white man. Because the white man has the same argument. Oh, that was a long time ago. Let bygones be bygones. God will handle it. So these Muslims need to shut the hell up. Stop talking about what the white man did 6,000 years ago or whatever. Oh, that was a long time ago. Let Allah handle it. Let Allah deal with it. And it's mighty funny. The same thing they talk about hypocrites. You're supposed to let Allah deal with the hypocrites. But you couldn't wait. And you praise the killers. See, this is the reason why I don't want nothing to do with religion. I don't want nothing to do with religion. The religion itself is hypocritical. It's fake and it's fraud. It's violent. It's divisive. And it's wicked and it's evil. Perpetrating as peace lovers. You're a liar. How the hell can you give this man, whether you like Malcolm or not, you don't tell me it's all right. And you knew about, and you treated this man like he didn't do a damn thing. This man shot down another Muslim in cold blood in front of his wife and children. Malcolm X had no weapon. It was a cowardly action. And you're gonna give him a pad, a pass, because now he realized he made a mistake. If he was a man, if he was a real Muslim, then he'd come out the damn shadows and admit what he did. And then you got innocent people that went to jail and served prison time for what you done. You Muslim ass hypocrite, fake ass vulture.
really? See how fake these people are? Don't bring me your damn fake ass religion. Muhammad, Jesus, Allah, whatever the crap is. Y'all some fake, low down, dirty, hypocrites. You let this man go to his grave with a smile on his face when you should have been letting him know what you done, sir. I understand you changed your life. And you gave your, your life to, to Allah. But you got to man up to what you done, sir. You caused a lot of people harm. Fake ass. You a fake ass. So he lived all this time and wasn't punished. And even in, according to the documentary, they just give him a pass. Oh well, that was a long time ago, you know, Malcolm dead, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to hear these Muslims tell, talk about racism and white supremacy. That was a long time ago, you shut the hell up. You just shut the hell up. You don't need to say nothing. If the killer of Malcolm X get a pass in your eyes because it was a long time ago or whatever, then the white man needs to get a pass. Y'all shut the hell up. Go back to your damn mosque, get your bean pie and a cup of coffee. And watch, and watch some damn Tarzan or something. See, this is your problem too, brothers and sisters. You're surrounded by these fake-ass people. Malcolm X was real. That's why you didn't see, a, even though Malcolm was famous, whatever, that's why you didn't see a lot of folks jumping on board with Malcolm X. Because they didn't want to get involved. They want to they wanna go to the temple every Sunday Praise Allah. Make make babies. Malcolm X talking about going to war. Malcolm X understood that if the bullet if the if the ballot don't work, then we gotta turn to the bullet. It's simple as that. Turn to the bullet. I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna be out of here. I had a conversation with an idiot, a 54-year-old idiot on Facebook, supposed to be so damn smart, read all these books. Yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. He's going to try to make mockery of the Mississippi campaign. Talk about revolution is by the bullet and not by your silly politics. Well, that's because he don't really don't understand what the Mississippi campaign is about. Talking and talking as a fool and ignorance. Anyway, I told him, well, if that's the case, sir, since you don't like politics, when was the last time you shot a bullet? Same type of question that interview gave Eric Muhammad. Since you believe in the ballot, sir, when was the last time you shot a bullet? He can't answer that. See, these fake ass folks, you 54 years old. If you really believe in, believe in that, and all y'all Negroes that's over 50, hell, you only got about 10, 15 more years to live anyway. Sacrifice your life, get your bullets together, and go to war, and be done with it. Since that's what you believe in, you already had your children, you seen your grandchildren, you about to retire from your crack ass job, well go to war, get your bullets. Well when was the last time you did this sir? Uh well, you don't want to talk about it's time for the bullet, see, fake ass folks, 
a bunch of mouth. Nation of Islam nothing but a bunch of mouth. And that's your leadership. Who you like. Who you like. It's a, leadership is not about who you like. It's about what you want. If you really want that, who can get the job done? When these CEOs of these businesses are chosen, it ain't about do you like them. It's nice if you do. It's not about can you make me some money. If I make you a CEO of my corporation, my business, can you make me some money? That's the bottom line. It's not about do you like them. Y'all silly tell about who you like. No, I don't give a damn who you like. I don't like Angel Snap Number 7. He talk about Jesus. Do you want to be free, liberated? Yeah. Well, Angel Snap Number 7 can do that. Well, I, well, I know. He talk about Jesus. He talk about Mr. Farrakhan. He don't like Michi X. He don't like nobody. I like liberation. I like freedom. If I thought these people was going to get that for you, I would tell you. I would be with them 1,000%. Has nothing to do with liking somebody. Can they get the job done? Clearly they cannot. Ain't about what I like. Do you or don't you want to be free? The choice is yours. You want to keep playing games, that's your business. Absolutely, twin. Twin says, open up y'all damn eyes. Be awake. You sure don't act like it. Supposed to be awake. Open up your eyes. What they said, smell the coffee. Come on. Do you want to be liberated? Do you want freedom? Do or don't you? Well, see, your actions speak louder than words. But guess what? I'm going to talk. Hey, what's up there, King? I'm going to talk because people have the right to hear the real truth. They have a right to see things from a real perspective. This delusional mindset needs to be challenged. And I'm happy to challenge. I wish there was somebody like me was around when I was 18 years old. I would never have wasted all those years and to answer my sister Ananda's question, I never would have wasted that nine years being with the Nation of Islam. I joined Farrakhan in 1981, I was fresh out of high school. 1981 to about 1989, 1990, something like that. I gave seven strong years, and then the last two, two or three years or whatever, I, uh, you know, I started slacking off because I, I, I saw, you know, for the the first two years, I see nothing. This ain't nothing was happening really. I could tell. Nothing, nothing was happening. I could see, I could see Farrakhan getting rich, but nothing was happening for me, my family, or my community. I could see nothing was happening. I was introduced to the teachings of Elijah Muhammad when I was about six or seven, probably. I, I didn't even know who Farrakhan was. 
I didn't know who Farrakhan was until 1981. I didn't even know who the man was. He did not impress me. Matter of fact, I didn't even know, I did not even know who Malcolm X was until Farrakhan started talking about him like a dog. I'm like, who the, who is Malcolm X? See, the thing about me, I don't go by what people say. Any of you in the chat room, any of, of you out there in the listening audience, I don't go by what people say about you. I will research and talk to you personally. I don't need Farrakhan to tell me about Malcolm X. I will research and find out myself. And when I research myself, even though I love Elijah Muhammad, I came to the conclusion that Elijah Muhammad was wrong. Nation of Islam was wrong for what they done to Malcolm X. And of course, people did not like my conclusion. And I told them, you can kick rocks. You can kick me out of this organization. I don't give a damn. I'm not your damn robot. You don't tell me what to do. Farrakhan don't tell me what to do. I'm not his slave. I joined to help him, not be his damn servant be his damn slave. Now, if you don't want me to help you no more, cool. It's not like you doing something for me. You ain't doing a damn thing for me anyway. <laughs> Man, I used to... I should have got brought up on charges of insubordination. Because <laughs> that's the way I used to talk. I ain't your damn slave. I don't play that. Elijah Muhammad said in, in, in his little pamphlet called the meaning of, of, of FOI, Elijah Muhammad says clearly, I do not raise robots. I'm not your robot. I'm not your slave. I'm not your servant. I respect Elijah Muhammad. I'm not your damn slave. I'm not your servant. I never did call him the holy apostle and the divine whatever. He was just a man to me. These people are just men to me. You ain't special. You ain't divine. I appreciate what you do. I'm not kissing your ass. Y'all a bunch of ass kick kissers. You can go on the internet and see what happened to your mouth. Those of y'all who like to kiss ass. <laughs> go on the internet. See what, what your tongue look like after you finish kissing ass. <laughs> I can't do it. I am not kissing Farrakhan backside or or uh, Tariq or Michi X or Cynthia G or Robert Prankett. I'm not kissing none of these people. Eric Muhammad, Sanetta, all y'all people y'all like, but but can't they not leading you nowhere? I'm not an ass kisser. I'm sorry. I don't do that. You might enjoy every other word. Oh, the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan. Uh, the Honorable Tariq Nashi said, Ooh, that, that makes me so sick. Make me sick to the stomach to be around people like that. The Bible said. The Quran said. Damn! You don't have a brain of your own? Who is really sickening? You see why people don't like me. You angry at me because I want you to think for yourself. Wow. That's what you angry with me for. Because I want you to think for yourself. Stop talking about all oh, the books you read and the DVD, DVDs you listen to. Use your damn brain. I want to talk to you. If I want to read a book, if I want to listen to a DVD and all that other crap, I can do that on my own. I want to talk to you, brother. I want to talk to you, sister. Keep telling me about what the Bible said, what Farrakhan said, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Marcus Garvey said this. I don't give a damn about all that. What you got a brain for? You just got this big piece of flesh sitting in your skull 
that you don't even try to use. How sad it is. How sad. We don't do that here. We think for ourselves here. And we accept reality here. So on that note, I hope that you join me Soul Liberation Day 2020 Saturday, December the 7th, 2019 Hopefully on this channel Thank you YouTube Thank you Facebook Support our sister Noble Levine She has a website called ancientcreationmyths.com YouTube page is called Alberta Parish our soul brother Talib, YouTube page Eric Bell, Rashida Strober, the world's dark skinned activist. Support her page. Talk to our, to our sister Rashida. Understand what darkism is. And of course, last but not least, our brother Gary Wilson, Cool Cool Cutter on YouTube. Support the platform. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments, subscribe, like, all that kind of stuff. Do it if you want to. If you don't do it, you know I don't. Y'all know I don't even trip. <laughs> I don't care. It is up to you. And I don't care whether you like me or not. I don't care about that either. Like I told you, it's not about. It's not about who you like. It's about can you get the job done. Be like that. Uh, Big Daddy K, back in the day. I get the job done. Duh, duh. <laughs> I get the job done. I'm only 5,000, as Don Cornelius always say. As important, I wish us love, peace, and soul.